اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم In this session we are going to talk about ordinal logistic regression analysis. Now the concept of ordinal logistic regression. Regression technique is used to assess the strength of relationship between one dependent and independent variable or variables. It helps in predicting value of dependent variable from one or more independent variables. Now linear regression analysis requires the outcome criterion variable to be measured as a continuous variable. However, there may be situations when the researcher would like to predict an outcome that is ordinal, that is on Likert scale, that is from strongly disagree to strongly agree. Now in such situations what you need to do is you will need ordinal logistic regression that is to assess the impact of one or more predictor variables on the outcome. Ordinal logistic regression analysis is a method to determine the reason result relationship of independent variables with the dependent variable. Now here are few example scenarios where a scholar may utilize ordinal logistic regression. The first one, a restaurant would like to assess factors that lead to high customer satisfaction ratings from strongly dissatisfied to strongly satisfied. A college would like to assess the student confidence level that is low to high based on their age, grade, aptitude test results. A HR researcher would like to ascertain how factors like experience, years of education, previous salary, university ranking affect the selection chances of a candidate in a job interview where selection chances are represented by or measured using low to high Likert scale. A scholar would like to predict the interest of university students in their studies where the interest is low or high that is based on the independent variables that include assignments co-curricular activities, gender and age. In this particular session, we are going to take this fourth scenario as our example. Now before I run ordinal logistic regression, let's see our data. So here is my interest measured as low and 5 is high, where 1 is very low, 5 is very high. And assignments, do you get any assignments? No. Yes. Again, co-curricular activities, one very few, two sometimes and three quite often. Another ordinal independent variable. Gender, zero male, one female, dichotomous variable and then the age is a continuous variable. So I've got a mix of all variables. I'm not using stress in this example. Now how do I run it? Go to analyze, regression, ordinal, now our dependent variable is interest and which one of these are categorical variables. So I'm going to put all these categorical variables here and my continuous variable will go into covariates. Now go to options and make sure logit is selected. Press continue. Go to output and this is one of the assumptions. So select test of parallel lines. Press continue. Nothing else to do, just press OK for results. Now here are our results. Now we've got case processing summary, model fitting information, goodness of fit, pseudo R square parameter estimates and test of parallel lines. Now I've got all these results here described in detail in this presentation here. So I'm just going to quickly go through these results. Now again, just go to analyze regression ordinal, make sure in factors you add your nominal or ordinal variables and in covariates you add your scale variables that is interval or ratio. From options select logit and from output select test of parallel lines. Now the first table that you see in the output is your case processing summary and what it does is 
that it shows you or highlights the cases included in the analysis. In this case, we've got 144 respondents. We've got 75 male, 69 female. And for co-curricular activities, 27 have said that, well, they have very few co-curricular activities. 71 have said, said that they have sometimes, quite often is 46. Similarly, the other categories and their frequency with the percentage as well. The next thing that we see is goodness of fit statistics and it, and it helps you determine whether the model adequately describes the data. Now we've got two tables for goodness of fit statistics. The first one is model fitting information. If the model is significant and here it is significant, this shows that there is a significant improvement in fit as compared to the null model. A null model is one where you do not have any predictors. So there is a significant improvement in predicting the outcome when you have predictors in the model. And this has to be significant. Now here the model fitting information shows that the model adequately describes the data. And we've got another table as well. Now this goodness of fit statistics indicates a poor fit if the significance value is less than 0.05. Now here it is greater than 0.05 and here it is less than 0.05. For model fitting information, it has to be less than 0.05 in order for the model to adequately describe the data. But here it has to be greater than 0.05. A goodness of fit test in general refers to measuring how well the observed data correspond to the fitted assumed model. Now in this case, it is a comparison between your observed and you are fitted, that is your assumed model. In this case, an insignificant value would mean that there are no significant differences in the observed and fitted model. Moving on. The next thing that you see is pseudo R square. Now this is model summary that shows pseudo R square. Pseudo means that it is not technically explaining the variation in your dependent variable. But they can be used as approximate variation in the criterion variable, which in this case is interest. Now in ordinal regression, we use McFadden value of R square here, this one, 0.104. And in this case, we can say there is 10.4% change or improvement in the prediction of the outcome. That is the prediction of interest in this case, interest in studies based on the predictors in comparison to the model when there are no predictors. The next important thing, parameter estimates. I want to assess whether my independent variables have a significant impact on my dependent variable that is interest. Estimate shows probability of case falling above a given category on the dependent variable. Now here, this is the estimate. And what it shows is the probability of falling into the given category on the dependent variable. Now, how do I interpret it? Now, the sign is interpreted as linear regression. Thus, as we do in linear regression, an increase in age would mean an increase in the chances of falling into the higher category on the dependent variable. In this case, the higher category in the dependent variable is higher interest. Now the plus sign is associated with an increased likelihood of the case falling into a higher category in the dependent variable. Now in this case, look at this, there is a plus sign with age. When there is no sign, it is a plus sign. And in this case, the plus sign would mean that when the age of the respondent increases, the chances of him or her having higher interest in the study increases. So there is a positive relationship between the two. Age and interest in studies have a positive relationship. A negative sign is associated with an increased likelihood of case falling into a lower category in the dependent variable. Now in this case, let's assume if there was a negative sign here. So this would mean that with increase of age, there will be lower interest. So when there is a positive sign, this means that an increase in IV means an increase in DV. 
when there is a negative sign this means that an increase in IV would mean a decrease in DV or vice versa a decrease in IV would mean an increase in your DV. Now in this case have a look here there is a negative sign here as well and that is with assignment. Here this means no assignment and ones means yes there is an assignment and how do we interpret it again we have already done this a positive sign here would mean that increasing age there is a higher interest in studies now as for assignments look at this there is a negative sign as for assignments students who receive an assignment have higher interest in studies because those who are not receiving an assignment have lower interest. Why am I saying it's a lower interest? Because there is a negative sign here. This means that those who do not receive an assignment have lower interest in comparison to those who receive an assignment. Moving on, let's do the other one. As for your co-curricular activities, which was an ordinal valuable, those students who have little chance of participating in co-curricular activities. Look at this. There is a negative sign here. There is a negative sign here. Now in order to interpret this, you will compare it with the third category that is your reference category. Now interest in studies for those who have low co-curricular activities is lower in comparison to those who have higher co-curricular activities participation. So and this is true for the second one as well. Those who have low co-curricular activities, in this case it is sometimes. So those who sometimes participate in co-curricular activities have lower interest in comparison to those who have high participation because there is a negative sign here. So your interest in studies is higher when you've got high co-curricular activities. Why it's higher here? Because there is a negative sign here, there is a negative sign here. Now in this case, look at this, zero represents male and one represents female. Now there is a positive sign here. Why positive? Because there is no sign, so it's positive. So male have a higher interest in studies in comparison to female. This is how you interpret the positive and negative sign in categorical predictor variables. Moving on. Now another important thing is odds ratio. Now what you've got is you've got your estimates here. Now you can get your odds ratio in Excel by using this formula here. So now what we need to do is we simply need to go to Excel and do it there. Let's go to Excel, open it. And let me copy this table here and get it into Excel. Let's paste it. Okay, let me add and here it is, is equal to EXP and select the cell and the odds ratio for age is over 1 and similarly you can have it for others as well. You cannot have it for your reference category here but you can have it for all others. Now how do I interpret it? Let's interpret it. Odds ratio. Odds ratio represents the odds of falling into a higher or lower category on the dependent variable with a unit change in the independent variable. Now if I change the age of the respondents, what are the odds of him or her falling into a higher or lower category? Similarly, if I change the way assignments are given, like, like if I give assignments or if I do not give assignments, how does it impact the interest in studies? Similarly for the co-curricular activities and gender. Now in this case, these are the odds ratio. This is greater than one and this is greater than one. And it represents increasing odds of being in a higher category on the dependent variable. So with an increase in age, there are higher chances or higher odds of having higher interest in studies. Again, look at this. Males have or male respondent have higher odds of interest in studies in comparison to female. 
and less than 1 obviously this shows that there are decreasing odds of being in a higher category with unit increase in the predictor that is if you decrease or change the odds here in this case you can decrease it in this case you are changing the odds because this is a predictor variable now the odds of studies or interest in studies decrease when you do not give an assignment but they can increase if you give an assignment the odds of interest in studies decrease when you've got low or sometimes if you are offering co-curricular activities but they will increase if you've got higher co-curricular activities now the odds of higher interest in studies are 1.370 times greater for higher aged students. Why 1.370? Here it is. In comparison to low age students. So if you increase the age by one unit, the odds of having interest in studies increase by this much. The odds of having interest in studies are this times low when students do not receive an assignment. So the odds of having interest in studies increase or will increase if you give them assignments. And similarly for co-curricular activities, the odds of increasing interest in studies will decrease if there are few co-curricular activities and they will increase if you've got higher co-curricular activities. And finally, the odds of male students having higher interest in studies is greater in comparison to females. And this is by 3.391. Finally, this is an assumption of ordinal logistic regression. Test of parallel lines. Assumption of ordinal logistic regression. The odds of falling into a higher level or lower level category on the DV are the same across the categories. Now you've got different categories here. The odds of falling into each category are the same. In simple terms, the effects of the predictors are the same across the level of dependent variables. Now the odds of falling into a higher category are the same as those of falling into a lower category. Odds of predictor falling into the categories on the dependent variable are the same across the response categories that is your interest in studies in this case. And this p-value has to be insignificant if you want this assumption to be fulfilled. And in this case, this assumption is fulfilled. Now, if the p-value is significant, you have to go for multinomial logistic regression. A significant test of parallel lines would mean that the probability of falling to a higher category does not vary across categories on the dependent variable. I hope this session would have helped you understand how to perform, analyze and interpret ordinal logistic regression in SPSS. Thank you very much.